I'm just going to do a quick overview here. Um, this tool is something I've been working on for quite some time, although only recently has it really been amenable to kind of turning into a real product. This is a thing called IBIS or Issue Based Information System. It was invented by a couple of guys in the 60s named Werner Kunst and Horst Riddle. They did their thing on index cards, so they did their thing on paper, but uh, this sort of technique has been uh, digitized uh, going back to the 80s. So if you see, for instance, uh, they kind of look like this. So this is the G IBIS by Conklin. He did his on, a, on sun workstations in the 80s. I think this was 88. Uh, yeah, it says 80, 87, 88 right there. So that was sort of how those looked. And uh, most of the tools out there, the digitized versions of IBIS, have this sort of a box arrow kind of a look to them. Mine um, takes sort of the view that uh, You've got the visualization in this, uh, of, of all of the network and the um, element in the center is always in focus and it's replicated over, over on the left. So that's kind of how that plays out. If I didn't say it already, actually IBIS uh, stands for Issue Based Information System. As the name implies, there are three classes of entities and one of them is an issue, and an issue is just a thing in the world that you want to do something about or steer around. And so issues have uh, positions to respond to them. And a position is what to do about a particular issue. And then you can have arguments which will either support or oppose uh, a given issue. And there are other relationships too. So you've got, for instance, an issue can be questioned, or a, a position or anything rather can be questioned by an issue. It can be suggested uh, or it can suggest a new issue. You build up a, uh, a sort of a structure of issues, positions, and arguments. But what this does, the point of this thing is to surface all of the design concerns that, that there are in the ecosystem because uh, as Christopher Alexander, who, by the way, worked uh, with Horst Riddle at one point at Berkeley in the 70s, Christopher Alexander is, of course, the architect who, uh, who came up with, among other things, the pattern language that, uh, that we all use in software. He did that with his collaborators, by the way. It wasn't just him that did it, although he gets all the credit. Alexander's uh, remark in his PhD thesis that uh, designers will generally agree on whether a particular design concern is valid, uh, but they may disagree on how important it is, how it's priority. Now, what the sort of idea behind this IBIS tool, and I have found just in using it over the last decade, and I use this with clients, and I intend to be using it more robustly or more intensively with clients, uh, as, I, as I extend the, uh, the software and, and make it more sort of more of a software product and less of a breadboard, less of a prototype, is that you can accommodate the complexity of all of these concerns without having to prematurely throw any of them out um, because there's infinite room for them. Another thing that was important to me in this design is that Every single node in this network uh, has its own URL. So you can actually identify and go to, you can put these in, reference these in documents and so on, just as you would in a, in a conventional bug tracker. And really like what the IBIS tool is supposed to be and what I use it for is kind of like a bug tracker for like the universe. It's, uh, it's not just a software thing, even though you could drill down and use, and, and the, Design of this sort of hyperbolic graph here, which is something that I cribbed from Sun uh, that they did in the 90s. Um, well, they did it with a tree, so I decided to do it with a directed graph. And I'm still working on that. This is a, this is a work in progress. It's kind of something that's going to have to be something that I'm going to have to set aside a good solid month just to tinker with on its own. The point is, with the, with the graph, 
um, is, yeah, that every single element is directly addressable. And furthermore, the data is open. So this is all open data. It's 100% transparent. And you can pull this data out and you can, um, you can transform it and, and, and do whatever you want with it. So the, the design of this, of this web application, and this is going to be more conspicuous when you get into other things like dossiers of you know, people and corporations and their sort of economic networks or, you know, reference, um, you know, what do they call it, citation networks, that kind of stuff as well. When you can actually pull out that data and transform it into other useful shapes. This is just one visualization. There could be others. And so uh, the design is really just sort of a, a thing on top of that. Now, this uh, is actually a, a representation of an issue network about the IBIS tool itself and uh, the uh, substrate that I intend to be moving this tool onto in the very near future as in you know we, uh, within the next couple of weeks uh, called Intertwingler which is uh, sort of a piece of infrastructure that will make it possible to make a much sort of richer tool. This is kind of a, this is a front end running on, to, on top of a back end prototype that is kind of limited in where it can be taken. So like this is kind of, you know, a part of the reason why uh, this uh, project, which initially I did not intend for it to be anything significant. Rather, I never intended it to be more than a technical prototype, but it turned out to be useful. And so it's been time for a while, and part of the reason why I made Intertwingler was to make it possible to turn this into a more robust tool for planning and analysis, which is really what it, what it is. Now, part of my contribution, like the reason why I actually made uh, Intertwingle in the first place was I made it to test a protocol for getting structured data from a web browser to a web server without needing JavaScript. But I needed a vocabulary to test that protocol. And one that I had handy was this IBIS thing. So I went and I took about two weeks around Halloween of 2013. And I took this, uh, this vocabulary, which I had written about a year before, and I bashed the tool out in about two weeks. So like, you know, I started in mid-October and it was about ready by Halloween. And it's been very, very slowly uh, accumulating since then until about December of last year when it was possible to decouple it completely from the front end from the back end, which I'm now in the process of taking this front end, this UI, uh, that you see here and putting it on top of the sort of back-end framework called Intertwingler. So that is the, 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 the work in the next little bit uh, to do that. Anyway, this is the IBIS tool. Um, I am going to be working on this as a planning tool and a sort of a guided uh, service where I come into your company and we sort of set this stuff up and then we can, you can run, run with it. Um, I do this anyway as a sort of ancillary uh, uh, support structure for my own uh, uh, consulting projects that I do with clients. Um, I am going to be in the very near future turning this into, again, it's going to be kind of like a cozy private uh, alpha uh, for those who are interested uh, to use this on, on their teams with a sort of a concierge support uh, 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 agreement and uh, and whatnot to sort of help you guys out with solving complex problems uh, in your organizations. So that's what I got for you. Have a good weekend.